UFO witnesses have reported that at the time of the close encounter there was a power outage or an alteration in the operation of electronic devices. The consequence of this type of interactions the UFOs would be responsible for massive blackouts in large cities. On July 2, 1996, something unknown managed to incapacitate communication and power systems throughout a region of 11 states of the US, from Montana to New Mexico. The chain reaction resulted in amazing traffic problems, forced medical centers and airports to activate their emergency plants, and left millions of people in dismay on a hot summer day. The next day, press reports indicated that the problem resided in three transmission lines of 500 kV, each one going from the hydroelectric power plants in the northwest area to the southwestern states. The authorities stated that the three lines fell simultaneously but were not able to explain what happened. The result was that more than a dozen power plants went offline, along with seven pumps in the Colorado River aqueduct. A spokesman for Bonneville Power, the company that manages the power line in the northwestern U.S., said the problem was in Rock Springs, Wyoming, where four 500-megawatt power plants suddenly went offline. 1.2 million people in Nevada, western Oregon, Southern Idaho and the state of California were without power. Joe Marshall of the Idaho Power Company said in a cable from the Associated Press, it was probably an overload, or there was some failure, but no one knows for sure what happened. Rumors abounded on the internet regarding UFO activity in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho place known for its sightings and in other points of the national power line. Perhaps there is still some truth in the old saying that those who forget the past are condemned to repeat it. On November 9, 1965, 29 million souls in the northeastern United States and millions more in Canada were plunged into darkness as electricity was affected by an unknown phenomenon. At 5.30 p.m. that fateful day, thousands of terrified New Yorkers were trapped in the tunnels of the subway trains and inside the elevators in the heart of the skyscrapers. 25 million people spent that unusual night in the lobby of the hotels in the city, in bars, cars and museums. No facility was left unharmed, not even the military bases. The blackout expanded like an ink blot, in a matter of minutes from the Niagara Falls region to the cities of Buffalo, Rochester, Utica and the smaller communities along the Great Lakes. Then, it covered the states of Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Hampshire, and Vermont. In a nation sunk in fear of the Cold War, where the memory of the missile crisis in Cuba was still fresh, it was feared at first that the blackout presaged the nuclear hecatomb. A commercial pilot exclaimed that the act of seeing the darkness that reigned in the earth that flew over his plane made him think that the end of the world had arrived. An aviation instructor north of Syracuse, New York, said he saw a colossal ball of fire hovering over the quarter million volt high voltage lines belonging to the Niagara Mohawk Company's Clay New York station. Precisely at that time, operators in the New York area recorded a massive onslaught of power to the north, perhaps attracted by the fireball. Thousands of witnesses in the darkened cities and rural communities witnessed that afternoon strange lights that crossed the sky with impunity. On December 3, 1965, Ciudad Juarez in Mexico and the major cities of the American Southwest were victims of unexpected blackouts, while Socorro, New Mexico, the Holloman Air Base, and the White Sands Missile Field and other facilities of strategic interest were unusable. The fault fell on a couple of defective units in some corner of New Mexico, however, local witnesses claimed to have seen a glowing object on the power plant. The physicist James MacDonald, passionate apologist for the existence of UFOs until his tragic death, did not hesitate to say that the source of the blackout were the unidentified. South America would also experience mass blackouts, as well as the great darkness that enveloped Buenos Aires on December 26, 1965. Most of the city remained in darkness for seven hours without emergency plants available to official circles. As a result, the lack of communication with the authorities caused a tremendous panic among the population. However, symbol-shape objects capable of sucking energy had already made themselves known in South America years before. A glittering symbol-shaped UFO flew slowly over the Brazilian community of Morgimirim in 1957, extinguishing the lights in its path. 
viewers were able to observe completely black areas directly below the UFO path and other adjacent areas where the light had only dimmed. The situation normalized just after the talkative had left the area. Patrol officer Herbert Shermer, the unfortunate protagonist of the UFO hijack from Ashland, Nebraska in 1967, was allegedly ordered by one of his alien hosts to peer through a window, the policeman could see that the spaceship in which he was, had extended a probe on a high voltage cable. There was a brief flash and the probe started feeding electricity from the cable. Could this kind of operation have been the cause of the great blackout of the Northeast, as well as other faults of unknown origin?